This is uh, environmental advocacy, and this is something that for me is the most important. Um, I grew up in Southern California, and like many of you, ocean was, was my nature. That was my first introduction to wanting to protect the places I play and really thinking about the bigger picture of becoming a steward for the environment. Um, so let's start with Jeremy, and just wanted to touch a little bit on, on Protect Our Winners, the nonprofit that Jeremy started. And what was uh, the kind of aha moment for you that really was the deciding factor and a convincer for you to want to start POW? Yeah, um, I guess, God, it goes, I, I guess, basically I make a, my living climbing up mountains, snowboarding down in and I have to have a very intimate relationship with the snow. And I wouldn't be here if I didn't have that understanding of snow. And like as a surfer, like we live and breathe um, with that communion with, with snow or water. And I started seeing changes. And it was glaciers in Chamonix. It was a closed resort in Northern Canada. Um, and that was around 2003 where I was with a group of locals who were in their 30s and they were telling me that um, we were walking up their resort, it was mid-February and it was grass and the resort was closed and I'm like, why isn't it open anymore? And they said, we just don't get snow down here. I was like, wow, dude, you guys are not that old. What's gonna happen? I started thinking 30 years down the line thought, um, I was like, we need to do something. I actually called a friend in the environmental space, said, hey, I want to take some money and put it towards something on climate change. Um, he said, came back to me a week later and said, um, you know, you guys have nothing on that space. It's uh, you, you as a group, as skiers and snowboarders that depend on snow, you need to be doing something on this. And I did not like that answer. Um, I did not want to, my goal was not to start a nonprofit and um, go down that road. But as time went on, I'm like, man, this stuff is really changing. We're seeing it. And um, it took a couple of years to get it up and running. But uh, in 2000, or 10 years ago, we launched Protect Our Winners. Awesome. So Greg, um, you've surfed all over the world some of the biggest waves out there and seen some pretty exotic locations. Um, what has been the biggest eye-opener for you in terms of um, environmental degradation to our, to our world's oceans? Coming from the ocean, we're in a slightly different space than the mountains where climate change isn't as apparent. And actually, I've heard people argue that climate change is going to be beneficial to the surfing industry in a lot of ways, and that we're going to get bigger storms, which we are seeing. But it's pretty selfish to look at it in that context. Um, when you look at the catastrophic weather events that are happening across the globe, floods, fires, lack of snow, rainfall, droughts, um, so that's something that, but it is still very relevant uh, when you are paying really close attention. I can, I actually just went down to the beach that I learned to surf at down at San Onofre, just south of it, uh, called the Bluffs or Trails, uh, to do a piece with Surfrider Foundation about climate change. And this beach that I grew up on surfing, I remember being 100, 150 yards sand beach walking out there, which is why my dad took me down there is not there, that on the high tide, it literally, waterline comes up to the bluffs, and the bluffs are eroding more and more every single year. Our beaches in San Clemente, there's a regular sand replenishment project that's yeah. been going on for years, and the sand will not stay there. You go down there during mm -hmm. the last uh, full moon cycle, the high tides are going all the way up to the rocks that are creating the buffer to the train tracks. So you can say that this is just you know a cycle, but uh, I don't believe so. Yeah. Uh, as you said, changes that, you know, in my 30 years of being down there, I've never seen. And then looking at it from an environmental standpoint, um, one of the biggest ones that is undeniable is the ocean plastic pollution problem. Yes. Um, no matter where you go in the world, you will find 
plastic on the beach, whether it's microplastics um, or you know the most prominent places. I remember going to Bali my first time, 18 years old, and you know seeing that it was a problem. But right. uh, I was admittedly very naive then, probably not recognizing it uh, for the gravity in which it, uh, the severity of it in which it already uh, presented. But now it's it's out of control right and so that's one that is just uh you know undeniable so exactly and now that you're working with companies to kind of um think of new ideas to use plastic and um materials and um apparel and stuff like that and when we think about it um you know plastics it's, it derives from oil and coal and that's kind of the bigger thing that we got to think about here is how do we kind of take this to the top and, and get to politics and all be on the same page here about moving towards renewables and really getting away from, from coal and oil? It's a big one. So, so Jeremy, you've been um, doing a lot of op-eds and going to DC quite a bit and really getting a, a hand on what's happening um, in DC. Did you ever think you would be going there as a snowboarder on the mountain? And um, I know that's where our home is and where we kind of feel the most protected, but that's a totally different world. Well, they do call it Capitol Hill. And <laughs> so <laughs> that's a great point. I've written some really, um, which some people would say crazy mountains out there, but nothing as as tricky as Capitol Hill. <laughs> a lot of crevasses. <laughs> here, here. If, if I knew, um, when we started Protect Our Winners, I knew right away, like in my head, the slogan was, together we can protect our winners. And I knew that I sure as heck wasn't, um, you know, gonna be able to just put this thing on my back and um, make it happen. So I just started, I had this motto of not being afraid to ask and I'm like either people rally around this like I'm gonna basically put it out there and just try and bring people in and for example being a pro snowboarder I um, really focused on not going after my sponsors but going after different companies uh, we have Burton snowboards is um, Donna Carpenter the CEO is on our board I really like this is not a um, I did not want to have it be a Jeremy Jones Foundation so I went out to the best scientists I could find, and everyone kept saying yes, and, and so we, you know, are surrounded by some really good, the, the best of the best in this field, and when we started, it was all about um, water bottles and light bulbs and, and all stuff that is totally important, um, but pretty quickly, we realized that uh, real change needs to happen with our elected officials. And I wish that wasn't the case. I would, uh, it's been the single biggest hurdle with climate change is that it is a political issue. Um, we have these amazing solutions out there, um, but it's, you know, it's a political issue and that's just the reality that we're in right now. And without major support um, at Capitol Hill and with the federal government, we cannot accelerate the change that we need to happen. Yeah, very true. And um, I really want to, you know, put an essence on and, you know, this, this is really about us as athletes and as our personal choices and using our platforms. Um, so this is a good one for both you guys. And it's, let's use our, how do we use our personal brand and our platform? Um, because that's essential. And, and when did you start to see you could use your platform to push for change and environmental advocacy? Let me start with you, Greg. I think uh, for me, it uh, happened early on. I was fortunate. Uh, my father yeah. was a lifeguard park ranger. So right. that kind of came with my territory growing up as much as these waves you know, are here for you to recreate and it's Correct. also your duty to protect it. So that kind of was instilled within me as a child. Uh, which led me to starting to work at a younger age you know, with the environmental groups in the surfing space. But now more so than ever with uh, how connected we are in social media. And when you take a step back to look at it, you know, that these brands you know, are 
grabbing on to the youth and to these individuals to sell a product. Yeah. Um, and within that, you know, there's a tremendous amount of space to be utilized and also selling a positive message for change. And that's something uh, in the surf industry, I personally feel has been significantly neglected, where it's always mm -hmm. just been about, you know, what's the next color trend, the next, you know, fabric right. that we're going to be able to, you know, push and up our profits. Whereas, just as equally within that, you can also be sending out a message that, you know, the next youth generation, you know, wants to dress like that kid, wants to train like that kid, following them day in and day out on Instagram, you know, they should also have a responsibility and be encouraged by these brands um, to be spreading that message of environmental awareness, consciousness, uh, to be influencing that change as well. So. For me, it happened at a young age, and now more so than ever, when I actually realize you know, the leverage and the power that the surfing industry, the outdoor industry, you know, has, and how many billions of people are tuning in and following on a regular basis. Right, and that's something on a personal level and you know, a business level that it's so important to call each other out these days um, on an environmental level and be like, we can make serious change here, and it's totally doable, and we need to hold these companies accountable for that. Jeremy, anything to mention? Yeah, I mean, I, it's, when I started Protect Our Winners, I kind of, being an athlete, our, you know, you, you work with the magazines, the movie makers and everything, and it was before social media. I'm about 423 years old in pro snowboard years. <laughs> and <laughs> it's, um, and so I'm just like, I know I can get ads in the mags and da da da. I just kind of like connected all these dots. It's very di no different than marketing a new film coming out or what have you. And it's like, let's market climate change and, and have people come together. And um, so that was the origins of it. But, um, you know, you have this social media now, which is this incredible platform. Um, Unfortunately, as Caroline so beautifully and horribly depicted the bad side of it, um, it if you can get past the the trolls, um, you can really rally people. And the thing with protect our winners um, and what we have, and as we dig in and start rolling up our sleeves on, let's say, this coming election. And I'm in a lot of rooms with election uh, specialists and stuff, and I'd say the you know it's definitely an older crowd. They are not on this platform of social media. Um, that's where we come in. We 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 live in that space, and we need. Um, I mean, it's something like 12% of the of people um, under 35 voted in the last election. That number needs to come up. Where are those people at? They're on social media, and that's where we're talking to the people. Right, right on. Um, so kind of just what you touched on a little bit about um, social, and I'd like to kind of talk about how POW has really used its marketing tactics and its social media in a huge way. Um, they basically took what Action Sports has been doing forever and kind of put that in the NGO realm of doing things totally differently and that's something that I think POW has had a huge success with. Yeah, I mean, again, it's just kind of like, and I mean, I, I wish we'd had more success, yeah. uh, but because that is really the front lines is getting people to care about climate change because um, it's not going away and using the same, you know, ideally inspiring to uh, get people to act. And that's really what we do. And we just, again, it's kind of like in that language and that look and that um, it's, you know, that's the space that we're in. And, and we, you know, when it's all working and we get everyone behind us, we can really move the needle. Um, we had an interesting thing um, we got a call from the previous administration from the White House. Um, they came out with this this deal, um, a clean power plant, and they were trying to generate energy on it, or you know, generate 
um, support from it and protect our winners got behind it we came up with this act hashtag act on climate and put our might through it we reached out to all our athletes and and this was you know before social media as big as it now but um we got behind it and the white house called us up and said you know we cannot believe we calculate your reach on that that clean power plan at 12 million people wow and it was way that's incredible you know so that's kind of the space that we're working in so greg um uh in terms of, this is kind of a good one for everyone and what can the snow community learn from from surfing and how we're protecting our oceans and what can the surf community learn from what protect our winners has started and um the passion that our snow community has for for advocacy and protecting these places that we love so much. Well, I think Chad Nelson uh, touched on it <laughs> earlier that right. um, you know when it comes to athlete engagement, yeah. uh, the surf industry is really slow uh -huh. in getting uh, <laughs> those individuals to engage and really support the organizations that are out there on the front lines. And I uh, actually was just coordinating a, a meeting the other day between PAL and Pure to really you know, look at what Jeremy's done and how amazingly he has activated you know, not just the snow world, but the whole outdoor industry. You know, they've got trail runners, everybody supporting Protect Our Winters. Um, you know, so it's more of what we can learn from uh, Powell and follow their lead, because they are you know, at the forefront of climate change. And we obviously have a, um, an array of amazing organizations, but when it comes to you know, athlete activation, yeah. engagement, and uh, the messaging out there, um, you know, they are leading the way, undoubtedly. That's really important for sure. The messaging is such a Can big I, one. I just yeah. want to jump in real quick because it was going to be the first thing I was going to say is um, the first check I ever wrote for the environment was the Surfrider Foundation. Nice. So <laughs> Woo. I just, up, uh, having you, guys. you here, Chad, I just want to, it's a huge honor to be sharing a stage that, you know, in a room with Surfrider Foundation. So thank yeah. you for that. Surfrider started everything. I've been a big supporter and a fan forever. So thank you guys. Um, so what if the outdoor community and the surf community joined forces? In terms of an economic powerhouse, I think we're unstoppable. What do you guys think? I, I totally agree. Um, the, you know, the, the problem, and this is, sort of, this is like a major problem is why, you know, that is that it is this political issue. Because if you went around to the surf trade show or the snow trade show, who wants to do something on climate change? I mean, basically every company is going to raise their hand like, hell yeah, let's kick ass. And then they go and the marketing person's like, this is awesome. And they're like, hey, climate change, let's do something about it. And then all of a sudden it's just boom, 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 boom. You know, the amount, the trolls come out. They're very organized. There's not a lot of them, but they are gnarly. And they're like, <laughs> oh, my God, we got a bad comment. This is the end of the world. Someone doesn't like us. We got to run the other way. And <laughs> it's just you need to have some guts and some backbone and both. It's not this, just the surf, it's the snow. They're very vanilla and they're afraid to piss people off and it's killing us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's so, action. I'm gonna leave you guys with a little calls to action real quick before we get into Q&A. Um, Jeremy, do you wanna mention with midterms and pal? Um, be great if we could all bust out our phones real quick. Whoa, okay. Oh, I might have to. We're doing um, this. So, yeah, just protect our winners. This last election happened, and it was, you know, a brutal day. And um, we made a huge commitment and just are putting all our chips on the table. We went from a staff of three to 11. We have a uh, POW Action Fund, and um, we are in this all hands on deck moment. So, um, if you text and I have it right here, you guys. Okay, go for so it. So we're gonna text vote POW to the number five two eight eight six, and that's gonna be the take to pledge to vote for everyone. 
That's our more imp most important tool right now coming into the midterms is we need everyone to vote. And so that's vote POW to 52886. And that'll get you registered and up to date on what's happening. So 52886, Eight. vote POW, one word. Thank you. Um, Thank any you. last words, Greg? On yeah, that um, we didn't get Thank to you. this place, uh, these environmental challenges with you know, truly grave consequences should we carry it on the same path overnight. And it wasn't yes. one industry, the surf industry. Um, you know, I'm guilty. I've been consuming plastic my entire life. I drive a car. I fly on a plane. It's taken many years and billions of small actions by all of us. To get out of it, it's going to take the exact same. That There is no one single solution. It's not an eco-surfboard. That's just one small solution in this world that we live in. When you look at climate change, the global plastic pollution problem, uh, it can be very overwhelming when you look at it. You know, how are we ever going to change the world? It's not about changing the world. It's about changing ourselves and the world that we live in. And that's something that we can all easily do. It's going to take a billion small actions on every level. Your daily consumption habits. Getting engaged within the elections. Making that smarter choice of, you know, that piece of plastic that you may or may not you know, need, that all of that adds up. And changing our own worlds, if we we're only to adopt that as our motto, it would be so easy to change the world. And that's what it's going to take. And uh, Zach, for bringing everybody here together to discuss this and how uh, we can create more compassion and empathy and uh, raise the overall consciousness and love within this community is a truly exceptional event. So while I'm up here and have the stage uh, to inertia and everybody else and for everybody being here uh, and a part of this truly wonderful gathering. Thanks inertia. Thank you guys.